Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the problem of charge leakage. We will understand this with a C square MOS circuit. So here on the screen I have drawn a C square MOS inverter. C square MOS is nothing but clock CMOS inverter and we have seen it's working in the previous clip. We'll quickly recap that. We know that when phi is equal to 1, phi bar is equal to 0. So my M3 and M2 transistors both are on and it is nothing but a closed switch and my circuit reduces to M1 with a closed switch of M2 and M3 between which the output is taken and an M4 transistor which is nothing but a simple inverter which we have already studied previously. So this clock signals help in data synchronization. But a question might arise, what would happen if phi is equal to 0 and phi bar is equal to 1. If that's the case, my M2 and M3 transistors both would be off. So it does not matter what is present on the value of A because M1 does not have a part to output and M4 also does not have a direct part towards output or my VDD does not have a part towards output or output does not have a part towards ground because my in between two transistors are off. Let's zoom in this transistors M2 and M3 which I have done here for you and let's see what's going to happen at this point of time. When M2 is off, this is a PMOS, we all know that in PMOS the drain and the source both are P types. So this is a P, this is a P and for NMOS both are going to be N types. But we also know that in order to avoid body effect or substrate bias effect, we have studied this in the previous clips. In order to avoid body effect or substrate bias effect, ideally we connect a source and a body at the same potential. Here ideally if that's the case we have seen what happens due to that but there might be cases where you want your body of your pull up which is nothing but in this case this body or the substrate or the bulk terminal is nothing but an N type and for a pull down which is an N MOS the substrate is a P type. So you want your substrate of PMOS which is an N type to connect towards VDD and your NMOS substrate which is a P type to connect towards ground. We do this if you remember the cross sectional view of a suppose say an NMOS this was my NMOS and this is my P substrate then we connect this substrate towards ground that is exactly what I have done and vice versa can be shown for PMOS as well this is for NMOS. So what's going to happen here is because these two transistors are off there'll be some leakage current flow and the first leakage current which we are coming across is nothing but the leakage current due to the PN junction diode which is reverse biased. See this N type is connected towards VDD and here is a P type so there will be a PN junction diode formed here where N potential is connected to a higher value and hence a reverse bias current will flow. The same can be explained here as well. P is connected towards ground and P and N so PN junction diode will be formed. You can show it here also. Depends. Ideally it should be between your substrate and your terminal which is connected towards your output. So there will be a PN junction diode which will be formed and because of this PN junction diode there will be some leakage current flowing. Now let's label this leakage current for the time being because this is flowing from N type towards P. So we'll call it as IP this current and this is going from N towards P. So we'll call it as IN to this current. There are leakage currents right. So in NMOS we have called the leakage current as IN and in PMOS we have called the leakage current as IP and they are reverse leakage currents. Now let's assume that there is a capacitor at the output and I out. So if we apply Kirchhoff's current law here, we'll come to know that current entering that is I out plus IP is equal to I n current leaving which is nothing but I out equal to I n minus I p. If we assume I n to be greater than I p is just an assumption then I out is going to be a positive value. Let's call this new positive value of I out to be equal to I L and let's see what is going to happen. So we know that I L is equal to I N minus I P. We also know that I'll come back to this diagram shortly. 
we know that IL is equal to IN minus IP. We also know that the output current, which is nothing but the load current now across the capacitor and the current is given by C dV by dt. If you see the diagram, this is C out. So I'll have to replace C as C out. And I'm presuming that at initial time equal to zero, my initial voltage across the capacitor was equal to V1. So C out dV by dt and initial voltage, as I said, is V1. We want to find the final voltage. Now, how did this negative sign come in the picture? Again, if you see here properly, I'm presuming my current leaving the positive terminal and hence I have considered the negative sign there. So this equation is clear. Now we need to just integrate this equation. Let's quickly do that. So my initial voltage was V1. I want to find the voltage at time equal to T. So this is nothing but that integration dV equal to minus zero to T IL C out. This entire thing is into DT. We'll assume IL to be constant. And if we do that, let's see what we'll get V of T equal to V1 minus IL upon C out into T. This equation clearly tells me that if my initial voltage was V1, as time goes on increasing, my voltage is a function of time and it keeps on reducing. Now let's see what's going to happen due to this. Let's presume my initial voltage was equal to VDD or 1.8 volts. And we also very clearly know that if the value of the logic is between 0 to 1.8, this is logic 0 and this is VDD, then till 0 to the center, say approximately around 0.9, this will be considered as a logic 0 and this will be considered as a logic high. So what's happening is in this case, if this was 1.8, this is going down, going down, going down at one point of time till here, it will be interpreted as logic high. After this, it goes below 0.9. So it will be interpreted as logic zero. So what's going to happen here is my output has lost its value because of the leakage currents. So this is the maximum point, let's say, till which my output can hold the correct value of the voltage such that it can be interpreted as a correct logic value high. And this is nothing but the time for which my output can hold the correct value. So it's nothing but the whole time. So due to charge leakage, what will happen is here we are showing that there is a linear decay in the voltage. Technically, it's not to be the case, which we'll see as we go ahead in this clip. But then for the time being, it shows that my voltage value is getting reduced due to the leakage current or due to charge leakage and I'm losing out on my value and I can have the correct value only till the whole time. So let's find out the whole time for my circuit now. So in the same equation, what we are going to do is We'll replace this T with the whole time because we want to find the whole time of our circuit. V1 minus IL C out. There's nothing but whole time. And let's call this VTH to be nothing but VX. Just let's call this. That will give me on rearranging the terms TH equal to C out IL V1 minus VX. So this is the whole time. Now let's presume some values here. So let's presume my output capacitor is equal to 50 femtofarad and let's assume our current IL or the leakage current to be equal to 0.1 picoamperes. Now if we substitute these values here with the change in voltage V1 minus Vx to be approximately equal to 1 volt, what we will get is a whole time is equal to 0.5 second. Now this is a good enough hold time or this is quite a huge hold time because in submicron devices this seems to be a time like infinity but then we need to understand that this is not the only leakage current which is present there are other leakage currents present as well so let's quickly go ahead and see what are the other leakage currents before we go ahead and do that my question is what if my initial value v1 was not equal to vdd but was equal to zero then at that point of time, what would have happened is, if you go back to the circuit, this was zero initially. And what will happen is, because of the leakage currents now, this will keep on charging. So there'll be a charging which will happen. And due to which the voltage 
will rise and at one point of time the zero value is also lost we can true this similarly to the way we have done here but currently it's fine if you have understood the concept with a logic value high getting degraded so let's see the other leakage currents which are present so other leakage currents we have already seen in the previous clips the subthreshold conduction current or the subthreshold current is nothing but as an estimate is given by i equal to ido into w by l into exponential function of minus vgs minus vt upon eta times vth now the ideal value of ido is 10 raised to minus 9 amperes let's assume the same value of capacitor as 50 femtofarad voltage change as 1 volt we'll assume vgs is equal to 0 because this is the current which flows when my vgs is less than vt this value depends on the value of the capacitance this is nothing but kt by q which is 26 millivolts let's resume w by ls1 and this is nothing but my threshold voltage so if you try to simplify all this i'll presume this current comes out to be as an approximation 10 raised to minus 9 so let's put this in the whole time equation again so this is nothing but c out upon il into v1 minus vx v1 minus vx is the same c out is the same only il changes so this is nothing but 15 to 10 raised to minus 15 upon 10 raised to minus 9 into 1 when that's the case you get your whole time reduced to 50 microseconds so you understand that you will need a minimum frequency for your circuit to operate i'll explain this term what do you mean by minimum frequency very shortly in the further clips if your circuit does not operate at that frequency you will tend to lose out on your value due to a problem called charge leakage for the timing what you need to understand from this clip is how is a high value getting degraded to a lower value just because of the leakage currents which are present in the circuit when the transistors are off and hence when this charge leaks this will be a very common phenomena in DRAM circuits which we'll see again in the further clips you will need refresh mechanisms before we go ahead let's complete the final formality the other leakage currents present also due to the physical structure and the materials used and this leakage value can range somewhere around 10 raised to minus 7 amperes so if i do the same substitutions with c out same v1 minus vx same and il is equal to 10 raised to minus 7 then what i get is nothing but 0.5 microseconds which is again very very less whole time ideally what's happening here is if we see this is just an approximation in reality leakage current is a function of my voltage so is my c out which is also a function of voltage here we have seen an approximation of how we understand the leakage current but in real time my leakage current is a function of voltage and so is my c out so this is how it's going to be technically c out which is a function of voltage upon il which is a function of voltage into dv which is equal to t if you simulate this in real time what you will get is that your voltage does not decrease linearly but your voltage would decrease somewhat in this fashion where your initial voltage was v1 say this was your voltage vx and this was your whole time th so it's not a linear decay so in summary what we learned in this clip is we learned the concept of charge leakage we saw a c square mos circuit we saw a condition where both my NMOS and PMOS transistors which were connected to the output were off because of clock. At that point of time we saw the PN junction diode reverse currents flowing because the bulk were connected to VDD or ground and at that point of time we do leakage currents we saw that how if we assume the initial voltage to be V1 how did we start deteriorating or how did we start losing out on that value with some equations and then we further went ahead and saw some other leakage currents which reduced the whole time further and we understood that we have to have a minimum frequency of operation for our circuit and in order to not lose the value we should also have refresh mechanisms in case of dynamic circuits so minimum frequency and refresh mechanism will be seeing in the further clips hope you have followed this stay tuned thank you very much and take care